Welcome to Medical Edge. My name is Lisa Wilson. This program is produced as a partnership between the Mayo Clinic and the City of Thornton. We hope every episode provides valuable health information for you and your family. I will miss this place. I've got a lot of friends out here now. And Ernie Balcueva's packing up, ready to say goodbye to what's been his home away from home for 10 months. The Gift of Life Transplant House offers a quiet sanctuary to Mayo Clinic patients going through a variety of organ, stem cell, or bone marrow transplants, often life-saving procedures, which was definitely the case for Ernie. The reality is that Ernie is quite sick. He's, he needs uh, medication to support his heart and to support his overall circulation. Ernie's extended stay at Mayo Clinic was actually his second trip to Minnesota to undergo life-saving heart transplants. So Ernie underwent heart transplant here at Mayo Clinic 15 years ago. Ernie, hey, how, how are you? Cardiologist Dr. Brooks Edwards is director of Mayo Clinic's transplant program. He says Ernie's first transplant allowed him to defy a rare congenital heart condition, a condition that had claimed the lives of all four of his brothers. Abnormally developed heart muscle caused brothers Eddie and Brad to die as children less than two years apart. Brothers Randy and Rick died as young men. Then, when Ernie's replacement heart started to fail, his father feared he could lose his last son, a near certainty if Ernie could not get another transplant in time. Pretty hard to think that they gave us only 17% chance of getting a match. <laughs> in spite of his optimistic demeanor and the comical collection of boxer shorts friends sent to decorate his hospital room and keep his spirits up, Ernie's situation was becoming more serious each passing day, with his heart now beating at less than half its normal strength and severe disease in his heart arteries. Ernie was admitted to the hospital to stay. Unfortunately, with the lack of donors, we have uh, always patients waiting in the hospital, and nowadays almost all of them wait um, at least many weeks and very often many months. When Ernie's turn finally came, he had been hospitalized for seven months. No wonder there was a celebration in the middle of the night. <laughs> you guys are awesome. When news arrived that a suitable match had been found and a donor heart was indeed on the way. By now, Ernie says, he'd grown very close to the Mayo Clinic transplant team, who was just as thrilled about his opportunity as he was. It really helped that I was here, I think, and that I had the nurses that I have and, you know, the same doctors I've had for 15, 16 years now. So with a full contingent of supporters cheering him on, Ernie crossed the finish line of his marathon weight. Go Ernie! <laughs> Now it was time for a sprint, although it was clear everyone back on Ernie's floor at the transplant wing would breathe a sigh of relief once they got word that all went well. Good luck. See you in a couple days. See you tomorrow. After a final blessing from his mother, okay. see you in a couple hours. Mm -hmm. And one more reassuring word from a father to his last surviving son. Yeah. All right, see you. <laughs> okay. Ernie headed back into the operating room where transplant surgeon Dr. Richard Daly would remove the now worn out heart that Dr. Daly himself had placed in Ernie's chest 15 years earlier. The timing of each step of the operation has to be carefully orchestrated, tracking the exact location of the donor heart in transit, waiting until the last possible moment to reroute the blood flowing through Ernie's body to a heart-lung bypass machine and finally removing the heart that had served Ernie for as long as it was physically able. When the donor heart arrives, anticipation soars for Dr. Daly and the team. It's their first chance to assess the size and condition of this gift, oh, a good heart. which they hope will restore Ernie's health. A gift in the deepest sense of the word, Ernie would later recall, knowing that his family's gain that night came at the expense of another family's loss. It would be uh, very nice to, to meet somebody from that family and, and let them know that, uh, you know, that, that I really appreciate what they, what they did during a very difficult time. Six weeks later, Ernie's gratitude continued to grow, right along with his strength. 
he's determined to fulfill his part of the bargain and condition his new heart to its fullest potential. It's a lot of work, and that's basically to get uh, as, as much of a cardio workout as possible and keep the heart working and, and make everything fit together and get my muscles back. Ernie's case is indeed dramatic with uh, five boys and, and all five of them affected by heart disease. Because of their complicated conditions, four of the Balcueva brothers could not be saved. But thanks to his transplant, one of Eddie's sons is going yes. home. I'm so happy about it. And I'm sure that those four boys had something to do with it. <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> Ernie has a couple of sons of his own that he can now fully look forward to catching up with. Getting back together with, uh, with the boys is probably the most important thing. That's what getting well is all about. Just as good medical care may come in many forms, healing may touch many lives, and Ernie's not the only one going home with a renewed heart. It'll be nice to, to get back and, and feel somewhat normal. Take, Take care. care. Yep, bye-bye. At the same time, be thankful for everything and everybody out here that's, that's helped take care of everything. For the Mayo Clinic News Network, I'm Dennis Doda. I'm a morning show guy on a radio station in Twin Falls, Idaho. Hot 100 FM. It's the Hot 100 FM Early Morning Show. Good morning. It's day 15 with James and Janam. It gives me a chance to once again bust out the greatest Irish song of all time. High energy makes James Raby's show a leader in the market. But getting through a shift was tough when his kidneys began to fail. They just pew, shut down. But well, it probably wasn't pew, all in one day. Um, I, I got more and more tired more and more worn out. James was born with Alport syndrome, a genetic condition that causes end-stage kidney disease. When I was about, I think, five or six, my mom had us all tested uh, for Alport syndrome. She told me, well, one day you'll probably need a new kidney. That day came when James was in his mid-40s. He went on dialysis, and the search for a donor kidney began. I told him what his blood type was, and I said, oh, that's a minus two. James' big sister, Joan, stepped up. I was driving through Nebraska when she called me and told me that she was a match. And I had, I had to pull over and just think about that for a while, how great that was. It wasn't a certainty yet because you know, all the other things have to fall into place. But, it, it, you know, I sat there and cried for a while. It was great. It was one of those great... <sighs> Why try for a living donor instead of a deceased donor kidney? Here's Mayo Clinic transplant surgeon Dr. Mikkel Prieto. There's a, two major reasons for doing this. The first one is we have a limited number of disease donor organs. And therefore, to get a disease donor organ, you need to go on a waiting list and typically wait for a few years to get a transplant. The second reason is that living kidneys are usually healthier than deceased donor kidneys and may last longer. Both James and his sister Joan had successful surgeries. Your overriding feeling is, yeah, a little bit of pain, but wow, I feel so good. It took a while for both to recover completely, but James is back on the air, waking up his morning show fans with great energy. For Mayo Clinic News Network, I'm Vivian Williams. That's all for this edition of Medical Edge. To learn more about the stories featured on this program, you can find additional resources by visiting our website and following the link to the Mayo Clinic. Thanks for watching and be sure to watch the next episode of Medical Edge.